Welcome to Holtwell AME Church, where we believe in owning our community. Our pastor is the Reverend Jarrett B. Washington, and our first family is Lady Deronda Washington and Braylon J.L. Join pastor on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 6.30 a.m. for morning prayer and devotion. For an interactive live Bible study, join pastor and the ministerial staff on Saturdays at 9 a.m. for our Bible studies. Now a message from our pastor. Good morning, Hopewell African Methodist Episcopal Church, also known as the House of Hope Hemingway. I am Pastor Jarrett Britton Washington. I'm Lady Deronda Washington. I'm Braylon J. L. Washington. And what can we say but this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are yet rejoicing and being glad in it. Truly, God has kept each and every one of us for such a time as this, and we recognize, despite all that we're going through in this world, that we are still yet called to serve. Hope well and community members, thought for the week. Have you lost your 2020 vision? As we ended the year 2019, everyone was so excited about the year 2020, and they were calling it the year of vision, the year that they can see better and to hear from God. But we're about five months into 2020, and I think a lot of us have lost our 2020 vision. So refocus those lenses. If it was a business that God challenged you to start, get it started. If it was classes that you were to enroll in, enroll today. Do not lose your 2020 vision. It's time to refocus. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Now, please enjoy this message crafted exactly for you. God bless you. My brothers and my sisters, would you meet me in the text as recorded in the book of Acts, chapter number 27, and looking at verse number 23. As you look, let me say that I am so thankful that God woke me up this morning and God started me on my way I thank God for the very spirit of Christ that is living, breathing, and moving even in this atmosphere that we find ourselves in right now. I thank God for the Holy Spirit that's still yet bringing all things to my remembrance. And then I thank God for each and every one of you who are tuned in and watching us at this very hour. I must bless God for my partner in ministry and my best friend, Deronda, who just celebrated her birthday and I thank God for our beautiful daughter, Braylon. I'm looking and finding myself in the scripture as recorded in Acts chapter number 27 and looking at verse number 23, where the word of God says, For there stood by me on this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and to whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul, for you must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe, God, that it will be just as it was told to me. That 25th verse really stood out to me where the word of God says, therefore, take heart, men, for I believe, God, that it will be just as it was told to me. On this 10th Sunday of self-sheltering and quarantining, God has released me to preach to you from this subject, these two words, believe God, believe God. Certainly now is a good time in all of our lives for us to come to terms with our belief system. As we have all been soul searching and trying to understand the very place God has for each of us over these past few months, we are going to need some sort of clarification on what God is about to do next. See, the truth of the matter is that while we have yet been out of church, the building, we understand that the church is yet still open for the business of God. And if we be serious about learning from this particular season, then the lesson is that we need to be so enamored by the grace and mercy of God that it needs to permeate from the very being of who we are and make all of us better. I am convinced that looking at ministry as we have come to know it has messed a whole lot of people up. I get so troubled in my soul that folk get so obsessed 
with the glitz and the glam, the collar and the cufflings, the Bentleys and the Beamers, the suits and the ties, the applauds and the name calling, that they have an unassuming false reality of what it takes to be in ministry and furthermore what it takes to be called the beloved of God. Ministry, as we have come to know it, has given people a false sense of reality where folk believe that bad things just simply don't happen to those of us who love God. Ministry, as we had come to know it, had created a desperate and disparaging church where people simply believe all they have to do is name it and claim it and it shall be theirs. But the truth of the matter is it takes real work, care and concern to be all God has equipped you to be. It's in this season and this time of your life that God says not just to the preachers, but to the sheep and the shepherds that I'm going to take you through some things, but I'm going to also pull the real church out of you. If you just understand the establishment of the church in the book of Acts, then you come to understand that that which most of us have become enamored by was never intended to be the church. The church was to be the place of healing, help, assistance, sharing, and needs being met. The church was literally developed out of the spirit to minister to the spirit. And if you don't know about the real church, then nothing you are going through right now will ever make sense to where God is trying to take you. And I need you. My brothers and sisters, at this very moment in your life, to understand that the message for your life is simply to believe God. That your life will teach you that there are systematic distractions set up to get you out of the course of your life. But let me say it to you one more time. Believe God. Here in this morning's text of Acts chapter 27, we learn that the Apostle Paul is on a voyage to a place called Rome. A critical reading teaches you that it was decided earlier in the chapter that they would set sail to Italy to deliver Paul and some of the other prisoners to Julius, who was a centurion of the Augustan regiment. During the journey, Paul and the other prisoners, as well as those who were working on the ship, would face many ups and downs. Yet even even as the wind began to blow, they continued to press their way. The Bible tells us that the wind became unbearable at certain points, but they still continued to press. I want to help somebody right there in this preaching moment and let you know that sometimes in life, the strong winds will blow. Sometimes in life, things will appear as if they're not working for you. But I'm a living witness that there is an absolute blessing in your pressing, that you can't give up despite what it looks like in your life and what you may feel. See, emotions will make you think you're not going to make it. It's your emotions that will bring about a level of fear that says you can't make it to your destiny. Some days I know are harder than other days, but in the midst of it all, I need you still to press forward. Every day is a new day to press further towards the place God has ordained for your life. I know I'm talking to somebody right now. And so as I began to read, the Bible declares that the more they kept going forward towards Rome, the waters became increasingly dangerous. Paul notices the tossing and the turning of the waves and the breaks, and he stands tall on the boat to declare that the fast that he is on is now over. Paul says, men, I perceive that that this voyage will end with some sort of disaster and much loss, not only to the cargo and the ship, but also to our lives. Would you allow me to submit to you my first point? That is that your friends will go quiet when your enemies go crazy, but you still got to believe God. If you read the text closely for what it is, you understand that Paul was not saying they shouldn't go. But what Paul was saying was that they should wait before they go. Oftentimes in life, people want things right away, soon, fast, and in a hurry, that they forget the power of the blessing in waiting on things. As the believers, we see this all the time. People want position after position, but they hadn't waited on God to give them the position. It's not the pastor, the president, or even the CEO that's going to give you the promotion, but we understand that all promotion comes from God. Well, at some 
point in our lives we have gone crazy uh, trying to be loud about the places that God wants to take us. Uh, sometimes we get so anxious in the waiting process that we begin to tell everybody and everything what God is about to do. Uh, but sometimes in the midst of where we are going, uh, we share too much. Uh, and God says even in seasons like that, you got to learn how to be quiet and be still before the Lord. Uh, everybody is not ready to hear about your promotion in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, everybody can't handle your next level when they themselves have no level. Uh, look at the text I'm reading in the Bible that says that Paul declares that they should stop for a moment, uh, but folk who had nothing to say before this moment, according to the text, begin to start talking and whispering. Uh, the Bible says the helmsman and the owner of the ship began to talk, uh, declaring that they need to get this cargo to where it needs to be. Uh, and so they decide not to listen to Paul uh, and they start pulling their position. Uh, believer of God, God doesn't give you a position uh, for you to start throwing it around. Uh, some folk act like just because they got a title uh, that they can tell you how to do your job. Uh, but don't you understand that there is no title in the kingdom? Uh, either you believe God or you don't believe him. Uh, so because their titles were greater than Paul's earthly towel, uh, the ship continues to forge. Uh, it, the ship begins to go forward. Uh, sometimes it's the folk with the title uh, who will drive you crazy uh, and will simply cause you to die before your time. Uh, this is why the church of today must wrestle with the fact uh, that the power of somebody is not in their title. Uh, the power is in the anointing uh, that's over their lives. Uh, and brothers and sisters, before you go further in the text, uh, let me help somebody understand this really, uh, that you cannot buy the anointing of God. I don't care how many schools you've graduated from, how many positions you've held in life, uh, you will never be able to purchase the calling that's over your life. Uh, don't you realize that God will literally use anybody and anything to bless you when it's your time to be blessed. The Bible declares in the verse 14 of the text that a wind by the name of the Euroclidon begins to tempt the ship. Scholars, I researched this, and the Euroclidon is the southeast billow wind, the name of the wind which blew in the Adriatic Gulf. And when it struck the ship, when Paul was off the coast of Malta, it caused a tempestuous wind because it was like a typhoon of what we would now consider a hurricane. Get this in your mind. The ship that Paul had told them to stay where they were was starting to go directly into a hurricane. Allow me to submit to you this second point, and that is that many times the prophetic wind, thank you Jesus, comes when the circumstances of your life are at their worst. My living has taught me, I need you to get this, that when I'm at my lowest point, God can speak the absolute loudest. Next week in our Bible study on Saturday mornings, we are going to start studying on the very voice of God. How can you hear God when it seems like your world is falling apart? I know I'm not the only one in here that was this close to losing their mind. I know I'm not the only one in a church who had ever had to struggle with depression, with negative thoughts, with hurts, with hangups, and with pains. But what I've learned, my brothers and my sisters, in every one of those situations is that right before the bottom fell out, I saw God come to my rescue. Who am I talking to? The text declares that the men were tossed into this Euroclidon and things went from bad to worse. It got so bad that the men used their hands to toss all the food and the sustenance off of the ship and for fear it was going to weigh them down in the midst of the hurricane. The weather was so bad that there were no stars in the sky and the sun did not appear. They were in a deep black abyss and they could not see their way out. You 
you may not be on a ship. Who am I talking to? Uh, but is there anyone in here who can testify that I've had some dark days in my own life? Uh, there were some days I didn't know if I wanted to get out of bed, but thanks be to God. Just yesterday after Bible study, I took my dog for a walk around 1030 or 11 o'clock. Uh, and to my surprise, my neighbor was standing in her yard and she said to me, Jared, I just got out of bed. I wasn't feeling like facing today. And in my spirit, I said, thank you, God, because despite whatever my next door neighbor was facing, she got up out of her bed and she began to face her day. Can I tell you that it was in this situation that things got worse, that Paul declares that a very angel of God dropped by and gave him a visit. Let me speak to you and tell you and declare into your life that when things get really bad, just know that God is about to send you some help because he may not come when you want him, but God is always right on time. Who am I preaching to? For the Bible declares that Paul stands in verse 21 and says, men, you should have listened to me and not sailed from Crete and incurred the disaster and the loss. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I serve. And he said to me, do not be afraid. Paul, you must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you and all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart for men. I believe God, let me submit to you my last and final point that no matter where you go, no matter what you face, let everybody know that despite what I'm going through, I still believe God. Sisters and brothers, I need you to know uh, that God has sent me here on a Sunday morning uh, to tell somebody that when folk question your next move, uh, you simply tell them the Lord speaks to me uh, and I believe God. Uh, when the doctors question your faith, uh, tell them I still believe God. God, when folk on your job question your desire to go higher, you tell them, I believe God. When people don't support your business, you tell them, I still believe God. God, when people don't see how you're going to make it with what you have to make it, you tell them, I believe God. When folk can't understand how every one of your bills gets paid in your house and your children and family still eat good with food on your table in the midst of a pandemic, you say, I believe God. God, every opportunity you have, you tell folk how much you believe God. And the more you say, God, I trust you, and the more I believe you, God will say to you, prove it in your life. And the Bible says, prove me now, says the Lord of hosts, and that I will not open the windows of heaven. Who am I talking to? You've got to learn not to change your disposition. When God allows things to begin to happen around you. Uh, you are not of this world. Who am I talking to? Uh, and the things of the world cannot affect you. Uh, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And so the things that happen to others are no concern because God says I can still bring you through. Uh, Paul needed the men to understand uh, that yes, you will have some loss uh, and yes, you will have some trials. Uh, but despite everything you lose on this journey, uh, you will not lose your life. Who am I preaching to? I feel you tugging on me in the spirit. I really wasn't going to go there this morning, but what I feel in the spirit world is that the loss of this season does not compare to what God is trying to bring in your life. If I had about two more minutes, I would tell you that the word of God declares that because the men began to listen to Paul, the Bible says nobody lost lost their life. In fact, the Bible is clear that when it looked like the centurion and the ship workers weren't going to make it, they had decided to leave Paul and the other cargo. But Paul tells them that you must take us with you. Oh God, 
almighty, uh, if you really want to live today, uh, what am I saying to you this morning? Uh, you can't ever act like you're so big and bad uh, that you get so anointed in your own self uh, that you act like you don't need other folk uh, to survive in the future. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're all in this together uh, and we're going to come out better. Uh, God placed you here to be in communion uh, and fellowship with your brother and sister. Uh, if the church is going to be the church, uh, I've got to realize that when you hurt, uh, I'm hurt too. Uh, but when you rejoice, oh God Almighty, uh, I'm rejoicing with you. Uh, this is the essence of the Acts church. Uh, the Bible says that when the men decided uh, to keep Paul with them, uh, they landed on an island uh, and Paul begins to break bread, hallelujah, and gives it to all 276 men uh, and they ate the bread and gave thanks. This is why when we do have communion, we don't deny anybody because if you're going to eat, I'm going to eat. Why should you be hungry if I'm going to eat good? If you believe God, then you believe that God is rich enough to supply all of our needs. If you really believe God, then you believe that God is not only my way maker, but he is your way maker. And so today's message for your life uh, is simply despite what it looks like. Uh, I decree and I declare uh, that I still believe God. Uh, I know it looks bleak, my brother. I know things are out of order and in chaos, but I came to tell you that even in chaos, God is still your God. Uh, don't fall subject to what people say. Even as the president has told you to go back to your church building, uh, you remind the president uh, that he still has to answer to your God. And your God says, believe in me. Though they may die, yet you shall live. God wants you to thrive in the season. God wants you to make it. Remember, even when your friends go quiet, oh God Almighty, your enemy is going to go crazy. Listen, my brothers and my sisters to the prophetic wind that's coming your way. We are but only a week from the season beginning of Pentecost. In this season, the church has got to listen to the very wind of God and listen for God to give the answer. It's not about what Jared says. It's not about what your preacher says. It's about what God says. And because for God we live and for God we die, we must Believe God. Let everybody know uh, that you still trust him and that you still believe him. The Bible is clear that the people of God made it. Even if they had to make it on broken pieces, they made it. Who am I talking to? I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what trouble you've experienced. But if you're like me, you're trying to thrive in the midst of a pandemic. And I hear God saying all clearly and loudly to you today that I want you to still believe that I'm going to make a way for you. And because you believe God still makes ways, God says, I'm going to give you every desire of your heart. Yes, you're going to have to go through things. Yes, you're going to have to face struggles. Yes, you're going to have to face trials. But in the midst of every struggle, and in the midst of every trial, there's still a God who knows all about what you're facing. And so, brothers and sisters, we come to a point in our worship experience where you have to do some soul searching. You have to look in the midst of yourself and ask yourself, am I really saved? The Bible declares, thank you, Jesus. That it is the yoke of God that the anointing comes to destroy. Let me say to you this way, that it's your anointing that will destroy yokes. God, I thank you. I feel somebody praying for me. I feel you in the Holy Ghost. And so it's that situation that you're going through right now. I wish you could just believe with me. It's that thing that you're facing right now. That God says right now, I want to free you from it. I want to take you through it because you've been through it. And I want you to come out better. 
And God says the only way you're going to do that is if you really give your life over to him. And so I know that you're probably going to go to three, four, five, six, seven churches today. You're probably going to look at multiple sermons, hear wonderful words presented by the prognosticators and the theologians of God. But at this moment, before you go to your next service, ask yourself, am I really about God's service? I mean, look at yourself and ask yourself on this morning, God, do I really love you like I said I do? And so today I want you to, if you're not saved, to simply go wherever you can go in your house, in your car, in your office, wherever you're watching, and say, God, would you save me right now? I don't want to play church anymore. I don't want to act like I have it all figured out. But God, I want to be saved for real. And when God saves you in this season, he's going to take the little things and bless you with many because you've been faithful. If you're not saved, pray with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your eternal blessings. I thank you, God, for the anointing that's over my life that still yet does destroy the yoke. So now, God, I press into you, and I ask, God, that if you would, save me from myself so that, God, I accept you, I believe you, and I confess you, and I know it's working for my good. So, God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, I bless your name, and I honor you with my whole life because, God, I still believe you. So come into my heart and do what you said you were going to do. In Jesus' name I pray, and the people of God would say with me together, amen. I thank you for all that you're doing in this season. God is really calling us to be the real church, and God is really blessing us in an abundant way. Many of you have continued to inquire as to how you can be of a hope and assistance through your giving of your gifts of tithes and offerings to your church. I'm happy to announce to you today that our stewardship and finance team will be at the church on this Sunday, this morning, from 10 a.m. to 12 noon to receive your gifts of tithe and offering. Then many of you continue to give on your Givelify app. And for that, we tell the Lord, thank you. We trust and believe that as you give, that you recognize and believe that in your season of giving, you recognize that if you sow a good seed, you will reap a harvest. Many people need to understand that even in the midst of a pandemic, you can still thrive. I'm happy to report that God is still a way maker and God is still supplying all of his riches and glory. And so I thank you for what you're doing, how you share our services, how you share our Bible studies, how you join us each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in prayer. I thank God for your life because I know that in thanking you, that God gets all the glory. And so my brothers and my sisters, as we leave this place, we pray we never leave God's presence. And remember that despite all that you're going through, we still believe God. God bless you and God keep you. Thank you so much for joining us on today. We are so happy that you are part of our family on Sunday mornings. And we hope that this word found a place in your heart. So remember to like this video. And subscribe button to our channel. Subscribe, subscribe. to Hopewell's YouTube channel. Good job, Raylan. Good job. We thank God for all that God is doing and all that God is saying. And remember that we still believe God. We thank you. We praise God for your life. And we hope nothing but the best for you. Until we meet again, God bless you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Ways to Give. You may use your Givelify app and search for Holtwell AME Church, or you may also visit HoltwellAME.org for online giving. In person, you may meet with one of our Stewardship and Finance Committee members between 10 and noon on Sundays. Prayer and Devotion. Join Pastor Washington live at 6.30 a.m. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays for Prayer and Devotion. Our special worship link will be sent directly to church and community members on Sunday mornings for worship.
Study with the pastor and the ministerial staff live 9 a.m. on Saturdays for a riveting Bible study. Hopewell, we love you. Continue to be blessed. Until then, continue to serve God in spirit and in truth.